In this video, I'm going to do some very simple batch processing using only a do loop and a conditional statement, and then a bunch of other stuff. But those are the most complicated things I'll be using. So in this example, we, we have all of this data that we received in batch, right? A bunch of data that all follows about the same format. We have a last name, a first name, office, and quarter one, two, three, four, sales. And then it's the next one, first name, last name, office, one, two, three, sales. So what we want to do is restructure this data into a more usable format for a pivot table or something like that. So what we'll do is we'll stick the employee name together. We'll combine these two. We'll say what office they're in. We'll aggregate all those sales. It's just a sum of sales. And then we'll see what the average sales are. So let's start Alt F11. Here we go. Let me pull this to the side so we can see what's going on here. And that should be fine. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so we can see everything. Let me just make this more visible. There we go. Shrink that up. There we go. Now we can see everything just fine. I can pull this out a little bit and we can have more room for coding. All right. First things first, let's add a module to the right one. The master guide simplified. Insert module. I'm going to close this so we have more room. Option explicit at the top means we have to declare our variables. Let's create a sub batch me. Okay, first thing we need to do is declare some variables, right? Declare variables. What kind of variables do we need? Well, we could do this many different ways. I think we'll just try to keep it simple. We'll have a variable, say dim my name as a string, right? And we'll dim total sales Oop. as a currency. We'll dim average sales as currency. And, oh, I forgot the office, dim office. Uh, you know what, office might be taken. Let's do my office. Uh, since this is Microsoft Office, I don't wanna accidentally use a taken word. As a string, and hmm, that should probably about do it for now. We might end up having to come back and do um, a couple more variables, we'll see. So the main thing we're doing is we're looping through the processing of each little block of data here, right? We're going to do this one and then move down and do this one. In fact, I might just create some pseudocode here. Do block, block, increment, actually I'll, just, I'll call it move down, move down, and do another. And then the idea is, uh, let me tab this in here, exit the do if uh, our active cell is, is, is empty, if no more blocks. Okay, something like that. So let's start with this, this with a do loop, do. Let me end my do loop down here, loop. So the first thing we need to do in our loop is determine our exit clause. So uh, let's do it like this. If is empty, active cell, because we're just, we're just going to use the active cell to navigate in here. It's a little slower to do it that way, but with a small data set like this, it's not really a problem. So if is empty active cell, meaning we don't have any more active cells, uh, no, meaning we don't have any more blocks, then exit do. Oops, I didn't type then. Then exit do. There we go. And really this comment belongs with that line there, so I'm just going to move it up here. There we go. Exit do if no more blocks. Cool. What do we want to do with each block? Well, we want to process a few things. We want to say my name equals active cell dot offset zero comma one. Now, like, let me explain why uh, dot value. So let's say we start at a one. In fact, we better determine that. Let's right here. Let's say cells one one dot activate. So we know we're starting at a one, right? Um, and each time we go to a different block, we start right here where it says first. Well, we're going to put a name together by putting that and that together. Well, that at this one here is the active cell offset zero rows, one column, which is what we have here, right? Active cell offset zero rows, one column. Get that value. And quote, space, quote. So we're going to put a space in between these two values, active cell dot offset. 1 1 oops dot value 
if we offset from our active cell, remember our active cell is right here. We can go over to the right one and down one, and that's our last name. Cool, so that should work. In fact, if we wanted to test this real quick, we could just throw this into the immediate window. I'm just going to copy that. Let me pull this up here. Paste that here and hit enter. Ah, we have an error. I forgot to stick the other ampersand right here. There we go. Now, ah, we should be good. Let me get rid of this. Go copy this one more time. Shift N, Control C, Control V. And it's going to put this value into my name. Oh, except our active cell right now is B2. So let's go back to A1. And I'll do this again. Enter. And then we say, question mark, my name, and Hannah. Yay. So that worked. We know that code will work each time. We also need to set a value for office. So office, or my office, equals active cell dot offset. It is down two over one. Down two over one dot value. OK, that's my office. So the next thing we need to do is calculate our total sales and average sales. And there are many different ways we could do this. I'm going to do it perhaps the more complicated way just to teach about nested loops. So I'm going to say do and loop. There we go. Do loop exit do if is empty. I'm just going to do this again. Control C, Control V. So it's this, just the same line of code. If is empty active cell then exit do. So we're going to exit do if no more quarters. And what we'll do is, before we do that actually, we need to set the new active cell. Uh, the new active cell is going to be Q1. So, well, where it says Q1 here. So let's do that. Uh, active cell dot offset four is that right one two three nope it's three comma zero dot activate in fact why don't i just make my life less miserable and i'll go over one as well dot activate so what this is going to do it's going to jump from the currently active cell down one two three and over one and now our new active cell is this first quarter profits or sales i suppose and then we're there when we start and we say um total sales equals active mm -mm, equals total sales plus active cell dot value and then active cell dot offset one zero dot activate so we're just incrementing the active cell we're moving it down one so we did this this do we did the first one and now we're going to move down the second third fourth and when it moves down to here it's going to say oh active cell is empty so exit it won't calculate anything okay and then after it's exited, we want it to calculate average sales. Uh, average sales equals total sales divided by four, assuming we have data for all four quarters. We're going to assume we do have data for all four quarters. And then, and we've calculated everything. We need to put all of this data into the proper columns. Let's do this. Cells my row, comma, let's see, one, two, three, four dot value equals my name. Let me explain what this is. So I'm saying go to this location. We haven't specified my row yet, so we'll have to specify that. But uh, we're going to go to some row and the fourth column. Well, the fourth column is one, two, three, four, employee D. And we're going to give it my row, and we'll just increment my row as we go. So let's do that. Um, we need to dim my row up here. Dim my row as integer. I doubt we'll get bigger than 65,000. And we need to set my row to start. Well, we want it to start in D2. So my row would equal 2 when we start. I'm just going to do that right now. My, oops, my row equals 2. Okay, so when this starts, the first place it's going to stick data is in cells 2, comma 4. Okay, let's do another one. In fact, I'm just going to copy that line, control C, control V, and instead of my row this time, we're going to do my office. And it's not going to be column 4, it's going to be column 5. But it will still be the same row. Okay, let's do another one. This is going to be total sales. 
and it's going to be 6. And this one is average sales. And 7. Cool. That's pretty simple. We have a nested loop and an incrementing counter, which we haven't incremented yet. So after we're done placing all that data, let's um, let's make a note here. Uh, increment and wipe variables. So what variables need, do we need to increment? Uh, we need to increment my row. My row equals my row plus one. And we need to increment the active cell, right? Uh, currently, the active cell is here, here actually, because we went down one more and it exited that do. Now, before before it jumps back up to here to see if the cell's empty, we're down here. So we've exited this do. We're down here. We're calculating average sales. We're placing all of our data, and now we're going to increment the row and increment the cell. So. The new active cell is going to be down one, left one, right? So active cell dot offset, oops, offset, down one, comma, minus one, goes left, dot activate. And now our active cell is back to here. Cool. And this assumes that this data is always in this placement format, always one row between the, the, the blocks. We will assume that for now. There are ways around this, more dynamic coding, but this will suffice. All right, anything else we need to implement? Nope, I think we're good. And then we'll just do it again. And again, and again. Move down and do another, there we go. So this is the move down uh, right here. I can erase this because we captured it in this comment right here. Okay, and when it's done, let's just jump back up to the top, cells one, one, Dot activate and I like it to beep at me. Let me know it's done just in case I'm doing other things. I can hear it. I think that will do it. Just a quick look again at the code for those who need to catch up. There it is, all of it right there. Let's see if this works. Now, I highly recommend before you ever hit the run button, always save. Obviously, always save. Also, always reset the data to the way you expect to see it when you start which for us would be to delete this first, uh, or this row of data right here. And also, never run first try. Always do F8, step through it. So I'm gonna press F8. For those who don't have F8, go to run, nope, debug, step into. Okay, I'm gonna F8 through this. Hasn't yelled at us yet, that's a good sign. So I jump to A1. If it's empty, then exit, it's not empty. Set my name. Set my office. You can see if these got captured properly. My name equals Ann Hannah. My office equals Provo. Cool. And now it should jump down to there. And we're going to go through this a few times. Ooh, we didn't zero out total sales. We'll need to do that. In fact, while it's still running, I can do this because I'm just F8ing through this, just stepping through it. So we need to wipe. Go down here. We're going to wipe total sales. Total sales equals zero. And average sales equals zero. We actually don't need to wipe average sales because we're going to wipe it as we set it. But this is just clean. So there we go. F8. And it's going through. And you can see it's placing it up here. That's great. Last one, it placed it. And then it should jump down. It's going to wipe these two. It's going to loop. Check to see if this one's empty. It's not. It's going to do it again. Oh, this is cool. Let's do this a few times, make sure we're in the green. Looks pretty good. I'm going to hit F5. It runs. It finished. It hasn't beeped at me yet. But it is done. Okay, cool. Um, so, let's see if it works. Let me open this up. That looks pretty good. Maximize. There we go. Or fit. That looks really good. Go down to the bottom, we have Anastasia, Chloe. Let's see if that is the last one. It is. Cool. We captured them all in just a few seconds. Very nice. Just one last look at the code for those who would like. There is the entire, oh, almost entire. Let's see if I can capture it all here. There's the entire sub.
Just pause here if you need to catch up. Okay.